for major seven chords, I start from the three or the six. And for minor seven chords, start from the root. And dominant seven chords, I start from the uh, fifth. And and it's knowing that is is a thing. And then applying it. That's really where that's the final stage, which is where you're like E minor, or I'll do it from C because that's the third staff we haven't done yet. C minor. I'll put my index finger on the root, or sorry, my index, the the high note on the should be right there. So it'd be like this. Next we have D flat seven. I'll put it on the five. Next we have A flat major seven. I'll put it on the third. Just back in the same place where I was a moment ago. B7, starting from the five. I'll do it here. Oops, uh, I did the wrong shape. And then uh, E major seven. I'll do it from the 13. And then G7. Oh, I skipped to staves now. Let me start. Let me start over. C minor from the root. D flat seven from the fifth. Right. G flat major seven. I'll go ahead and start that on the um, third, and I'll go to the high E string shape. Next, A seven. I'll start that from the fifth. Uh, there. Then D major seven. I'll start from the sixth. Then I'll go ahead and do the. The from the the uh, third, so I used both of them. F seven starting from the fifth, and then B flat major seven. I'll start from the third. E minor seven from the root. F seven from the fifth. B flat major seven from the uh, about the sixth, and then E flat seven starting from the third. Right. And then, uh, and then I just do it again, and you know, like that time I ended up with some. I did some different things. Like instead of doing E minor here, maybe one time I do E minor here or here, um, like that. So I could do E minor, then I could do F seven. Oops, I did one with the wrong finger. So I'll do that again. E minor, F seven. B flat, I start from 13, and then D flat, and then G flat major 7, um, I'll go ahead and do it from the 13, and then A7, I'll do it from the, uh, from the, uh, I have to do it from the 5th, so I'll do it here. And then just, just keep going and keep going, take a second to go like this, you know. Um, and then, and then take a sip of coffee and do it again, you know? And then what happens, hopefully, is that maybe we do something like, um, maybe I go like this, where I play, if, you know, slow and calculated, E minor, 7, and then I go to F7, and I just change to some other voicing, you know, and I'm integrating it into my playing, so I can go like... And then the B flat major seven, and maybe I go. Um, oh, except I do it right, hopefully. It should be here. And then the D flat seven, and maybe on that one I play. Um, let's see. Uh, like uh, something like that, or maybe I just do this. You know. So the idea would be to try to integrate it little by little. Um, with the voicings that you've known for 20 years, you know? Uh, like D minor. Maybe I do an ordinary D minor. Then uh, E flat 7, maybe I do this one. Then to the A flat major 7, maybe I just do ordinary stuff. The B, maybe I do this. To E. To G. 7. To C. You see what I'm talking about? C minor to D7 to G major, a G flat major to A7. Um, D major to F. Um, and, you know, E minor from the beginning. F to D to 
to... Uh... Did I do that right? Oh, it should be uh, G flat. I, did, I messed that up. Like that. To A7. So like I can do a shape I've known for a long... This one. Followed by a shape I've known for a long time. Like just, you know, some ordinary... Like that. To D major 7. Cool. D, D minor. Like that's a cool transition. Um, one thing you can think of if you want, if you if you use your more normal voicings, in the more resolved places, that might work out really nicely. So, like for example, when I did here was D major, and I just did a major triad, and then D minor, I did the interesting voicing, and it, it was a nice transition to E flat seven. A flat, you know, B, then to E, and then to G, to C, you know? So just kind of throwing it in every now and then, and I'm putting it on the least resolved places, or places that are just the not, not the most resolved places, not like the one chord at the end, where very clearly it goes to a one chord. I mean, you could do it there too, and as you practice, you, you should do it everywhere, but Anyway, this tune is this tune is one example where you can just go through the entire tune and uh, start in different places and end in different places. And most other songs, it's like you look at it and go through it once and then turn the page to the next song. Go through it once, turn to the next page, go go through it once, next page. This one has so much content in it that you can just stay on one page and look at each staff as though it were a page. You know. Any questions, man? Yeah, but um, an example uh, would be like, I mean, just from our hour lesson, like doing things like just doing this, here's my E minor, you know, or this. It's like not only is this a thing I've not played before, it sounds so cool, like why have I not played it? But aside from that, now it's like I'm actually, it's kind of easy to do, easy to find. I go, oh yeah, here's the F7, you know. Then I'll go to B flat, ordinary. Then maybe D7 to G flat, ordinary. To A7 um, to D. D minor. E to A flat. And then to B. G7. Uh, that's not good. To, uh, what was I? C. Maybe here I go. Which is a shape that we learned previously by taking this one and doing all those inversions. Right? So then what I did here was I had like something for the, the G and then I went to the C. You know, so you can mix that. You can throw those in every now and then. But anyway, this is like that's like kind of like last stage. Um, all the stages up to that are the ones where we're just learning the shape and using the shape over every chord. After we really feel comfortable doing that, then maybe we want to try to mix it in with our other chords that we've known for a long time. But it takes a long time to really get to that point. I mean, and and even if you're that point with one chord, it doesn't mean you are with the next, right? Because like, uh, I I haven't done this shape. I haven't done this shape before, and. Um, and so it's as new to me as it is to you. And then it's just like if I practice a half hour a day, um, I should be good to go in a week. If I practice an hour a day, I'll definitely be down. I'll be good to go. Um, but even then, it's like something you still have to kind of force yourself to use for weeks and weeks and weeks, even after you know it. Because um, just think of how much practice you've had doing this shape. With all the millions of songs that were written around it, you know. Um, you could write a song around the shape if you want to really memorize it. Like maybe this, you know. Use that in it. Or uh, whatever, some of the other examples. Force it in. I'll give you an example real quick before we go. There's a, and I really should go, but there's an example of a um, Steely Dan tune. Josie, it's like... Um, nice. Uh, 
um, yeah. And then, um, those are the chords, and then we got. Anyway, the nice thing about that song is this part where it goes. This chord here is the open string version of a chord that comes here. This, this, and that are the same chord. Point is, like, this chord basically captures the entire essence of the, uh, of the piece in a certain way. When you hear this, and you hear, there's that chord. The same chord, the same voicing is used all the time. It's used twice in the intro, here and here, and then it's, it uses it in the, in the, um, in the verse. It goes back to that, and then after that, it does like, um, uh, it does it, a, oh, then it goes to this one. And then boom, same voicing. And this is actually uh, the same chord, just in another second voicing. And it goes back to this, you know. Um, I can't remember. It does something like, oh, it goes. Uses it again in a different place. The point is it just repeats that shape over and over and over and over in different places. And um, it's, almost as if, it's almost as if they wrote the song. They clearly wrote the song going, I'm going to use this chord a billion times. So, but what some people would do is they, they write stuff that they want to learn. You know, they're, they're writing it as a process of learning it. And then if it's a song they want to play, then it's one they have to practice. So they're practicing their own song that uses this chord that they, they previously couldn't do. Um, anyway, and so, yeah, if you want, also, you could write a song using this voicing. Just like Steely Dan does it here and here and here and here all within one song it'd be just the same as if you used this here somewhere else in the song you used it here and here maybe somewhere else you know whatever